Hi, um, I want to share a few thoughts out of Matthew 16 and Acts 2 today. Um, they're both really small passages, and, and actually I'm going to hone in on a very small phrase in both of them and talk about the meaning of the phrase that's become way too common for us and explain some of the significance of it. In Matthew 16, starting in verse 13, now Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi and he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said to him, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And then he said to them, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you're the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And he said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who's in heaven. So obviously Matthew's writing a period after a period of time, he's writing back to um, to encourage, generally people assume it's a group of Jewish disciples of Jesus and to remind them of the eyewitness testimonies that were handed down to them about Jesus' life. And this testimony of Jesus being the Christ gets handed down um, as, as central importance. It has central importance. And we'll talk about why in a second. And when you get to Acts 2, you have the same thing. You get to Acts 2, and Peter, in the day of Pentecost, Peter stands up among the 12 and begins to give meaning to what is happening in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And Peter concludes by saying, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. And Lord, most most likely here referencing the, um, the, the fact that he's been given all authority, um, like in Matthew 28, all authority has been given to me. Therefore, go and uh, disciple all the Gentiles. But again, the phrase I want to focus on is Christ. And, and two things that should stand out. One, we should not think automatic that if a new religion needed to begin, that they should borrow such a weird term, weird Jewish term, like the word Christ. Another religion coming forth out of Judaism didn't need a Christ. They needed a savior, maybe. They needed many other things that you could maybe fit him into, but the central confession that Jesus is the Christ that was the central confession to the early church and really still is today, despite the fact that it's misunderstood. It was not misunderstood in the first century. And Christ, which is the English translation or transliteration really of the Greek word Christos, which is a translation of the Hebrew Moshiach, both meaning to smear, Moshiach, and in the, the English translation of Moshiach is the Messiah. And Christ means the Messiah. And a Messiah in Judaism was not a savior of the world. A Messiah, despite the fact that there's other passages that talk about that, the Christ was the person anointed to be the king of Israel. It goes back to 2 Samuel Seven, when God promised one of David's descendants would always be on a throne. And God said, which is where you get Adam's or where, which is where you get Peter's language. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And so that phrase has often been imported into the discussion about Jesus' divinity. And there are many, many ways you can explain the divinity of Jesus. That's another subject. But the Son of God is not likely one of them. The Son of God likely references 2 Samuel 7 when God promised that one of David's descendants would sit forever on his throne. And he said about him, he said, and he will be like a son to me and I will treat him like a father. And so he became known as 
the one who's going to be anointed as king, who's going to be the son of God. He will be a son to me. I will be a father to him. And, and so both of these phrases basically reference the fact that this guy, Peter says, you are the king of Israel. You're the coming king of Israel that we've been waiting for. A political figure, in other words, not a religious figure. You're the political figure that the nation of Israel has been waiting for. And after the ascension of Jesus, and think about this, after the ascension of Jesus and after an extended period of the delay in his return, The early disciples of Jesus, several generations into it, when they still understood what the phrase meant, still didn't see the need to change the expectation of him being the Christ. Which meant the the early Jewish framework anticipating a returning king of the nation of Israel who will reign from Mount Zion, that being the central confession of the church, remained strong for several generations of disciples after the ascension of Jesus. And so I want to suggest reading the Bible, reading through the New Testament, don't skip over Jesus being the Christ. Jesus being the Christ imports a bunch of ideas about the delay of God's justice, an age to come where he will wipe every tear from our eyes, And he will establish everlasting righteousness. And Jerusalem will be the praise of the whole earth. And the nations will flow up to Jerusalem. They'll receive instruction from the Almighty. And then they'll go back to their own nations. And they'll beat their swords into plowshares. And their spears into pruning hooks. Global peace will result from Jesus being the Christ. And so when we read over this in the New Testament, I'm going to suggest stop. Don't let yourself read the Christ is Jesus' last name. Stop and say, the coming King of Israel. Who do you say that I am? You are the coming King of Israel. And amen, he still is the coming King of Israel. He will reign from Mount Zion. He will establish peace from sea to sea and restore creation. So guys, I hope this has been helpful. And... Um, As always, you can leave questions or comments uh, below wherever you see the video. Lord be with you guys. Bye-bye.